All right, so we have um, you know sort of looked at a lot of these preliminaries now, yeah. So we very quickly jump to uh, the real stuff, yeah. We talk start talking about stability, okay. And I've written as you can see uh, separately in the sense of Lyapunov, okay. So this was of course all of these notions are due to the notions that we study are due to A. M. Lyapunov, Russian mathematician. Probably nonlinear control, the way we know it will not exist without him. Okay. So, maybe somewhere in 1860s, 70s, and so on, uh, he wrote a couple of articles uh, which, you know, which uh, sort of delineated what is the notion of stability and how do you, uh, you know, ensure that stability is achieved. Okay. So, very, very, uh, I would say, um, important contributions to the field, you know, like I said, the field itself may not have existed because uh, this stability is basically the notion that we are always hunting as control guys, okay. Whatever you do, whatever system you are trying to dive, any anybody who is working with any dynamical system, eventually um, most of uh, your uh, feedback and most of the control that you talk about, be it autonomous cars, be it you know aerial vehicles, be it uh, smart grids, you are always trying to hunt for stability, yeah. Because uh, the basic idea is, and you all already know from linear systems, you have the notion of input-output stability, right? And then you have internal stability, but most people hardly study internal stability in linear systems. You usually talk about input-output stability, yeah. But it is still a notion of stability. The idea being that external disturbances do not uh, make your system deviate significantly from its operating point. Okay. So once you achieve an operating point, for example, you know your robot has uh, converged to a trajectory that you wanted to follow. Yeah. You don't want it to deviate. You know if there are any disturbances. Okay. So so notion of stability is how you uh, classify almost all problems in dynamical systems and control okay so there is no of course there is notions of optimality which is a separate sort of uh, line of thought in itself where you don't talk about uh, you know um, being resistant to disturbance being robust to disturbance and all that but then uh, it is open loop what we call open loop okay in the sense that any optimal trajectory or anything optimal that you come up with and again trajectory is again a very general word doesn't have to be something a robot is following or something a car is following no even a smart grid biological system you can always create trajectories okay for us trajectory is just a bunch of uh, a smooth curve in state space any smooth curve in state space is a trajectory for us okay so these trajectories that are uh, designed with some considerations, maybe optimality considerations. Yeah, for example, if you want uh, a satellite, you are launching a satellite and you want it to go to the moon. Um, once it's the first thing you do it is you put it in a low earth orbit, then you know it tends to expand its orbit, expand its orbit. Then after a certain point, it has something like a swing, okay, between the earth when the moon gets closest to earth there is a swing which is which means that there is a thrust extra thrust that is applied at a particular trajectory at a particular time so uh, and once it applies the trajectory it escapes the earth's trajectory and it sort of starts rotating about it it moves in straight line then it goes to the dark side of the moon then it starts rotating about the moon okay so there is like a, a particular escape route it takes from the earth's trajectories by doing a thrust maneuver at a very specific time okay this is very optimal. This is like one of the purest applications of optimality you will see. Okay. Here it is mostly it is open loop. There is no feedback or anything. At that particular time when uh, you see that you are you have this earth moon sort of a very nice uh, appropriately located earth and moon. You do the burn. You do the burn maneuver. You create the thrust. You escape the earth's trajectory earth's orbit and then you 
move on to the moons or the okay so this is more or less uh, standard way of how we fly uh, satellites because uh, otherwise we will never have enough fuel uh, if you if you did some random ridiculous things you will never have enough fuel to reach anywhere okay so i mean we have only limited fuel it's not like we have uh, you know petrol pump or something that is going to fill <laughs> fill gas for us in between so you just have enough so th this is where all the optimality questions come in okay open loop optimality is purely open loop however once uh, you get into orbit okay or or you think of the lander problem okay you need feedback because there will be disturbances which are trying to once you have an optimal trajectory you try to follow the optimal trajectory okay you need feedback why do you need feedback because you want to keep following the optimal trajectory what if you deviate what if you have you know suppose you had some solar panel and then some serious solar radiation happened at that time okay it was some particular moment when you know uh, some sunspot exploded there was some extra solar radiation coming through so you started uh, you know reorienting and tumbling in your orbit and doing some crazy things which you don't want to do okay you want to be pointed in a particular place then you need feedback right i mean you have sensors which are picking up that okay i'm starting to tumble so now i do a detumbling control or it any general attitude control orientation control so i sort of make sure that i come back to a particular orientation and i do this okay so that's where stability comes in okay this is feedback this is stability optimal open loop okay both are very important um these days there is of course concepts of doing them both together also and people are trying to derive stable laws by running uh, optimal engines so that's also one uh, way but it's numerical way of doing things maybe something that's more research than uh, reality at this point uh, but yeah our field relies completely on stability optimality obviously there are quite a few courses yeah in syscon and otherwise also you can i would say you should always get exposure to both sides of the coin okay all right uh, very very big preamble i think very motivating all right uh, stability okay uh we are always talking about a system which looks like this x dot is ftx okay with some initial condition yeah whenever i specify a dynamical system i specify a initial condition okay without initial condition yeah doesn't make any sense then there is a solution once i plug in the initial condition usually denoted by a different symbol okay most mathematically precise textbooks like vidyasagar for nonlinear systems you will find the notation for the solution is different from notation of the state although in a lot of my notes you will find ha huh? okay so fundamental matrix is more a linear system notion yeah uh, so the state transition matrix comes from the fundamental matrix so that is a little bit more of a linear system notion uh, in nonlinear systems the terminology is different the notation looks similar okay so this is called a solution if i wrote this as phi t x0 okay just this just change the notation to and put the t as the subscript okay this is called the flow this is called the flow of this dynamical system asterisk okay why is it called the flow it's very beautiful it's amazing yeah i mean uh, how how uh, we have made everything very geometrically intuitive yeah so just think about this here it looks like just a solution right i mean i plug in some initial condition initial time mostly whenever you talk about flows you sort of don't talk about the initial time you sort of forget the initial time technically you should remember the initial time also but most often more often than not you forget the initial time you say that it is some fixed time t0 and then you keep changing the x0 okay so here we are just talking about plugging the initial condition getting a solution so this is the solution function of time but the flow is something way more interesting right it gives you something more interesting when i look at it in this form why uh, say i have a bunch of initial conditions say these initial conditions come from a ellipse which i call capital x0 okay now by virtue of this differential equation solution once i plug in one x0 okay and i flow it 
flow it for time t okay just like you can think of flow in the river huh? you put one leaf at one point another leaf at another point in the river another leaf so you put a bunch of leaves from this ellipse into the river and it flows along this solution right because once i plug in a x0 and i plug in a time t i move in a certain way right so what is this i move here say i move here i move here so it may so happen that i may get a little bit distorted right and basically what i'm saying is this is time t okay so this is time t so basically all these leaves imaginary leaves that i put in this flow they of course move differently right they can't all be even though the average velocity of your stream may be similar and all that but overall because of obstacles or whatever everything flows differently and you may have a distorted shape now yeah you may have start with an ellipse you may have a distorted shape okay so this is the notion of a flow okay and a lot of uh, controllability and observability notions are based on flows okay we don't again we are not sure if we'll talk about those in the nonlinear context in this class uh, i'm not sure if we'll have the time and it's also deeply uh, more intense mathematically so i don't know how much we'll be able to prepare ourselves for it but that's the notion of a flow okay we basically just talk about the solution okay why because we are we are at a lot of times interested in uh, this function of time okay because we want to look at uh, this as a function of time all right once we put in the initial condition and initial time uh, we have a function of time here okay and we look at it sometimes we just call it x of t by the way yeah i, I don't actually specify this i write it as x of t okay so whenever i write it as x of t please understand that we are talking about the solution all right great great yeah i know it seems like we are we are talking too much about just some notation but it's not because uh, the solution is fixed only by the initial condition hmm? once i change this everything changes all right great once i have a system like this i need to talk about equilibrium what is the equilibrium the equilibrium is the state from which you never move uh, ideally ideally yeah in reality you will always move but ideally it's a uh, solution from which you never move yeah a uh, very simple if i have rolling objects like this i mean in fact every point is an equilibrium for this right this is a very interesting example right every point is an equilibrium because once i put it here it's fixed put it here don't disturb it fixed right so this sort of a system everything is in equilibrium this is an example of a non isolated equilibrium okay because every point in x is actually in equilibrium all right so equilibriums are class how do you compute the equilibrium you compute it by equating the right hand side to zero because that is what makes sure that x dot is zero if x dot is zero states are not going moving anywhere so you are fixed in state space means yeah that's essentially what you want you are at equilibrium so equilibrium is computed by equating this to zero okay what is an iso isolated equilibrium equilibrium is isolated if there is no equilibrium arbitrary close to it okay i do not write it as a definition deliberately yeah uh, because uh, there is no need to make it mathematical all you want is there cannot if you have one equilibrium no equilibrium should be arbitrarily close to it okay then it's an isolated equilibrium this is an example of a non isolated equilibrium this is an equilibrium this is an arbitrary close to this I have equilibrium everywhere okay and this is also an example if you look at this right here x1 dot is x1 x2 x2 dot is x1 square what is the equilibrium equate these to zero all i need is x1 to be zero right all i need is x1 to be zero x2 can be anything right i hope this is clear yes i'm equating x1 x2 to zero and x1 square to zero so once x1 is zero both are zero nothing moves so x2 is arbitrary so i mean equilibrium look like this and what is that if i draw it on the x y axis is the entire y axis 
okay the entire y axis is the equilibrium this is a non isolated equilibrium we don't like this all right we don't like this because all our results are based on convergence okay now uh, so stability asymptotic stability these are all properties which somehow connect to convergence now if you tell me that i am talking about the origin for convergence you can't because uh, when a, when the trajectory comes very close here yeah so this is also arbitrary close to the origin right so so basically what i am saying is there will always be a point which is so close to the origin that the talking about convergence of the origin and convergence of that point is identical yeah you will never be able to talk about convergence to the origin because you will always have a point so close to it equilibrium so close to it that talking about convergence of origin and talking about convergence of this other equilibrium is exactly the same thing okay so you want to in a lot of cases you can transform the system so that your equilibrium becomes isolated all right you may be able to do it yeah uh, if not you cannot talk about stability in the sense of lyapunov in these cases okay i hope that's clear you will not be able to talk about stability in the sense of lyapunov if you do not have an isolated equilibrium okay so please always verify that your system has an isolated equilibrium if not figure out a transformation if possible to convert the equilibrium to isolated equilibrium if not sorry you can't do lyapunov stability you have to figure out other notions of stability okay all right and that brings us to the first notion of stability let's see if we can highlight this all right so this is the notion of lyapunov stability just called lyapunov stability okay for stability in the sense of lyapunov all right okay great remember we are going back to epsilon delta definitions yeah uh, what does lyapunov stability uh, try to classify in terms of solutions it says that if you start close to the equilibrium you will remain close to the equilibrium that's it this is what is lyapunov stability yeah in words it just says if you start close to the equilibrium that is if your trajectories are initialized close to the equilibrium that is x0 is close to the equilibrium then x of t that is the solution will remain always remain close to the equilibrium always for all time okay that's lyapunov stability hmm in when you talk about uh, when you say lyapunov stability there is no notion of local or global it is just lyapunov stability there is no notion of local or global all you are not talking about convergence notice i did not say if i start close to the equilibrium i will go to the equilibrium no i just said if i start x0 close to the equilibrium my solutions xt will always remain close to the equilibrium that's it okay it is actually um uh, bebo stability in typically it's sort of comparable to bebo stability it is bounded input bounded output stability comparable not the same okay comparable to bounded input bounded output stability from the typical linear system sort of notions okay all right how do we put it mathematically we put it as a challenge solution always like this yeah given an epsilon find a delta yeah remember when we talked about convergence we talked about given an epsilon find an n okay here for all epsilon this is the notation huh? for all for all epsilon positive there exists a delta which can potentially depend on the initial time and epsilon itself positive such that whenever x0 is delta close to the equilibrium xt is epsilon close to the equilibrium okay so always start with epsilon okay please never try to flip this i always get this question first you are given an epsilon then you find a delta not the other way around okay although the way i said it in words seem like the other way around if i start close i remain close but that's not how the 
mathematical challenges or mathematical definitions. Mathematical definition says first you predefine how far you are allowed to go from the equilibrium. Then I will give you how small my initial condition should be. Okay. First you give me an epsilon, then I give you a delta such that if you start in a delta ball around the origin, you remain in an epsilon ball around the sorry equilibrium. Clear? By the way, whenever I talk about this, I may very uh, instead of saying norm and norm difference x0 minus xc and all that, I will keep saying delta close or delta ball. Yeah, please get used to this because we've already spoken about what is the uh, you know norm. What does the two norm uh, x x two norm of x less than or equal to one look like? Looks like a ball. Okay, so whenever I say ball, doesn't have to be a ball can be a square, can be a rhombus depending on the norm you choose. Yeah, here depending on the norm I choose, notice I have not mentioned any norm here. Yeah, these are all vector norms. Eh? This is also vector norm. But I did not specify one norm, two norm. You can choose any norm. Hmm? Okay, does not matter. Norms are comparable. Just do not change the norm. So, important thing is you are given an epsilon, then you find a delta. Okay. And I keep using the word delta ball, epsilon ball just to indicate norm x less than something, norm x less than 1, norm x less than delta, norm x less than epsilon. Okay? Please be aware. Can anybody tell me if epsilon ball will be larger or delta ball will be larger or epsilon greater than delta, epsilon less than delta, epsilon equal to delta, does this, this definition indicate any relation between epsilon and delta? Epsilon can be larger than delta. That is a very vague answer. Delta should be equal to epsilon. No. Does not necessary. Not necessary. Huh? Epsilon should be smaller. So, you are saying that if I start in a larger initial condition ball, I will remain in a smaller final condition. Forever I will remain at a smaller ball. Okay, let us let us look at all cases. What happens if let us look at cases, right? I mean, what happens if epsilon is less than delta? Suppose you give me an epsilon and I give you a delta which is larger than epsilon. What happens? Can you check both conditions? This condition, this condition is obviously satisfied because I gave you the delta, right? So, you will <laughs> this has to be satisfied. What about this condition? Actually, this is by the way, I am sorry, <laughs> it is not evident, unfortunately, the way I made this. This is included huh, in this definition. Yeah, I will just do this, yeah, that is fine. Yeah, for all t greater than or equal to t0 is already obviously included. Okay. So, now, if epsilon is less than delta, what happens for to this guy? What happens to this guy? Not satisfied at t0. If I put t0 here, the distance between these guys is delta, which is larger than epsilon. So, this is not satisfied at initial time itself. So, there is a problem if epsilon is less than delta. Okay. If epsilon is equal to delta, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But, so this is not possible. No, this is not possible. Okay. So, epsilon has to be greater than or equal to delta. It makes intuitive sense also, right? My initial condition ball will be smaller than where I want to remain for all time. Yeah. I mean, if you, if I tell you that I want to remain in say, you know, I mean, in, in a, in a 5 centimeter ball for all 5 centimeter radius for all time, my initial condition definitely has to be smaller than that. I mean, much smaller for me to be able to, because I have to allow for some expansion. I can't just assume that the system will, you know, uh, remain inside. You know, even equal is difficult to achieve in most cases. Okay, all right, great. So this is sort of the picture here that you that I typically show. So this will be the epsilon ball, the larger ball. Corresponding to it, you will always find a smaller delta ball. So that your trajectory start here, allow for it to get out, obviously. I mean, uh, or remain inside. But definitely can't 
go inside instantly right so, yeah so delta has to be less than equal to epsilon okay so that's the picture 